Hi, it's Bobby from Fifth Avenue Cakes. Welcome you back for another video tutorial. And today we are going to be doing flower paste Degamore orchids. Orchids are one of my favorite flowers to create. So I'd like to share with you some of the tips and tricks I've learned along the way. Well, welcome back. The first thing I'm going to show you are the leaves for the Degamore orchid. It's a long leaf. So I'm using a Tinker Tech long leaf cutter, and I will be giving you the exact name and num number for the cutter if you want it. We carry it in our shop. So that's the cutter. And then I'm going to be using ooh, just a regular tulip finer. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring my groove board in. And I will need this long section right here. Generally, there are two leaves that I would put in a spray. I'm going to show you one so you know how to do it. Right now, I'm just conditioning my paste that I have now colored with some fine, fine green food dust. And later on, when it is has a chance to firm up but isn't completely dry. We will dust it with some fine green, some moss green, and some foliage. I'm just going to grab a little bit of white vegetable fat. Depending on where you are in the country, it can be Crisco, it can be Trax, I think it comes under a zillion other names. going to roll this into a long log and I'm using the board to do that. The groove board. Staying away, or at least trying to stay away from those other grooves. If you do not have a groove board, it's not a problem. What you can do is take your paste and roll it out to maybe a one-eighth thickness and then start rolling from the center to the left and the center to the right leaving a space where your ridge will be. Alright, so that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm just going to press that into place. Take my mini rolling pin and roll it up and show you exactly what I mean when I say so if you did not have a groove board what you would do let me just get this a little bit smoother for you and of course that's way too long is you would take it out this way and this way leaving this section without any rolling so you would end up pretty much with the same kind of groove that I'm going to get right now. I would not take it paper thin the way we're going to do the orchids. I'm actually going to go tissue paper thin for those orchids. You will not need to do that for the leaves. Your leaves are a little bit more fleshy. So you're going to want to leave a little bit of flesh on there. But you do want to take it thin enough that it looks realistic. So right now I'm just using my muscles. As you can see, I can start seeing that groove show up. The same thing would happen if you did not have a groove board. I personally prefer the groove board. I've done it both ways. It's a little bit faster if you're doing a number of flowers of the same kind or even different kinds. But if you're just getting into the cake decorating and you're not sure if you're going to enjoy it, there's no reason for you to invest in a groove board. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the rest of this paste and we're going to put it back in our bag because we want to save it. I'm going to gently loosen it with my plastic spatula on both sides so that I don't scratch my board. 
move my board to the side. I will gently lift up my paste and bring it down. As you can see, I have a nice groove right here. If you don't have a groove board, of course, it will look a little bit different, but you should still end up with a groove. I'm going to center my cutter, place it in place, and even though you can't see the, the cutter, my hand is covering it, I am cutting, putting my paste back in a bag to keep it moist. I like to keep my gem paste in those uh, vegetable green bags, I think they work well. I'm scrubbing it against my mat just so that I don't have those little hairy things that sometimes you can get from a cutter. I'm gently releasing it from the cutter. There's my leaf. I will put it now onto my foam board. I am then going to insert a 24 gauge green wire. If you only want to buy one color, I would suggest buying white because you can always tape it in any color that you want. Here is, as you can see, there's my groove. I am going to put the wire into that groove and I can feel it by putting my finger up there. I'm not going to poke through the back or the front. I'm going to come in straight and because this leaf is so long, I'm going to go up almost halfway. So there we are. I'm going to bring this in just a little bit with my fingers, not too much because when I go to bind it, it will undo all the work I'm going to do to make it, it appear that it's growing out of my wire. So I'm just using my ball tool very lightly to take off it, any ridges if I have any. I'm then going to take my leaf and this is the back of my viner. Your viner's back is going to be heavier, heavier bind. The vines are going to be indented which means at that point when you put it down it will be raised. I'm going to put my leaf in there. It's a double viner, so I will place the top on top, which is the top of the leaf, and I will gently vine on both sides. Everybody has a different technique on how they push their viner. I'm quite a small woman, so I put a lot of weight into mine, which means I generally stand up. I try as hard as I can to not use any corn flour or corn starch. I find it dries out my paste too much, but if your paste is extremely sticky, go right ahead. And once you get to this point, it is fine to use your corn flour because at this point you're not going to be removing it. Well, all I'm doing now is I'm gently pinching the bottom, not even pinching it, just using my hand to attach it. At this point, I will take my ball half on, half off the pad, and add in the movement that I want my leaf to have. And these leaf, leaves have quite a bit of wave to them, so I'm going to add that. I want to bring this top right here in a little bit tighter. So I'm going to use my Dresden tool on the small side to do so. And now I will pinch from the bottom to the top, creating my central vein. And bringing that in. At this point, I can either, depending on how I decide I want this leaf to look, lay it on a dimple foam, or you can lay it on a leaf mat. I am going to lay it on the dimple foam, so I will go do that, and I will see you back here for the next set. Hi, welcome back. I did go ahead and put 
my leaf on its dimple foam. I decided to bend the tip back, just curling it a little so it had a little bit more movement around one of the dimples. And now I'm working on the column. Orchids have a few things in common. They all have a dorsal, which is the head, lateral wings, which are the arms, and lateral um, legs, which of course are the legs. So, and then they have a throat and a column. Right now I'm working on the column. This particular orchid has quite a small column compared to how lar large the throat is. I am dipping my 33 gauge wire into some egg white. I'm wiping on my arm in case I have too much. I'm going to take a very small piece of a white transparent gum paste, bring it up to the top, wrapping it around my wire. And then I'm just going to use my fingers like this to bring it up into elongated shape. And I will go ahead and then use my board to help me out. Not all columns are this small. And quite most are a little bit larger. I am now connecting the bottom portion to my wire so that it looks like when I add on my tape that it actually is realistic and growing out from there like a small stem. I'm going to bring in a foam pad. I'm going to hollow out on the small end the top part of my column. This particular column has almost wings on the side. Rather than try and get them in that small, I'm just smoothing out this as I did with myself a nice groove. I am going to take some angled tweezers, make a divot in the back here, like so, and that will then cause the gum paste to form those wings that I want. I'm going to allow this to dry for a little bit of time before I color it. I like to color my gum paste before it's completely dry. I think you've heard me say that before. So we'll let this get into shape. All right, for the leaf, this is where we're going to scrub color the same way we did with the white. I'm starting with Vine, which is almost the exact same color that, um, well, it is the exact same color that I colored my flower paste with. It just, because it's a powder, is more concentrated. I'm starting at the bottom and working my way up from the sides on in. I'm scrubbing in that center. This leaf happens to be an extremely dark leaf, so you're going to want to get an exuberant amount of layering. That does not mean that I want you to go in and just start pouring on color. I want you to do it in sections. We're going to layer first with the vine. Keeping in mind that your back, do not forget to do your back, but your back is going to be a little bit lighter than your front. All right, and I'm just using what is called a potato grease type of brush. It's just really, really soft and, and works real well. I'm now going to work with a pretty big flat, so number 10. And I'm going to grab some moss green, which believe it or not will not be dark enough. But I'm going to start at the bottom and go up and come in from the sides. And I'm really just going to scrub that color into my flower paste. Everybody colors different. Other people lay their leaves down. I'm more comfortable holding my leaf. But that's a personal preference.
And when I say layering colors, that means you might have to put two layers of this moss on before you go to your foliage. You could probably even go as dark as a pine, even though it's spring, this is a very, very dark leaf. I've noticed a lot of those tropical leaves, or tropical flowers, have dark, dark leaves. But we want to get this as realistic as possible, so we're going to take him fairly dark. I'm going to be using foliage. So that's the darkest that I'm going to go with this. And then I'll varnish the leaf to set the color. There are several ways you can varnish your leaf. You can spray it, the spray varnish. And if you're going to do that, I would use a well-ventilated area or put a mask on. You can paint it on with a brush. Um, I've even known people to put it in their edible varnish, which is really just a confectioner glaze, in a gigantic wide mouth jug and dip their leaves and berries, which are generally what you're going to be varnishing in. I use just a plastic bottle that comes with a brush and that's how I use it. Um, be sure not to use your favorite artist brush or one for painting cakes or anything too expensive because it will pretty much destroy your brush. No matter what you use to take it out, it will always have some sort of a hard feel to it. I'm now grabbing some of the foliage and I'm going to just layer that on with the foliage and paint the back first. A lot of times if I'm testing, like for fall, an autumn color, whatever, I'll start with a little section in the back because I know I can camouflage that and fix it rather than just start dusting my leaf and going, oh my god, now I just have to get rid of it because it didn't work out. And when you get to be a color that you want and you achieve the depth of color that you want, that's when you're going to go ahead and varnish. And I would let that varnish dry, I would say a good half hour before you assemble it. It can be quite tacky, depending on how humid it is. I happen to live in a very dry climate, so I'm always fighting things drying out faster than I want. As you can see, we're starting to get quite a few shades darker than when we first began. Now I like to add a little bit of my flower color into my leaf, but the purple will not, or the African violet, which is a purple, will not show up as well as I want, so I'm going to go in with that aubergine. And I like that, that's fine. So I will go in, grab a little bit of that aubergine I was using. And at this point, you can just decide. I like to sometimes put it on the base. I have my puffer, which I push away from the rest of my colors so they don't go flying. I'll get a little bit of that edge in here. If you find your color has gone somewhere you don't like, as long as you are not Scrubbing it in, that puffer, any puffer, will pretty much get rid of it. I wouldn't spit on your leaves. I know it's tempting, but it's not sanitary. Besides that, it'll make little marks that you won't be able to get rid of. Wet marks. So, puff. And truly, I am just trying to tie in the colors of my flower to my leaf. That's all I'm doing here and adding a little depth in. If aubergine is not a color you like, just pick another deep color that leaves have that you like. I like this color, it's just, it has so much going on. It's interesting, it adds a lot of depth. You can use it to mix. That's pretty perfect. 
So now I'm going to take my edible varnish and I'm going to lay this on this towel right here. And you're just going to want to brush up from the bottom to the top. Now it's not the same where you're, you can get a concentrated up amount. I do like to wipe my brush against my bottle so I don't get too much. This is done at 50% um, which means I added a little bit. I added 50% of the confectioner glaze to 50% alcohol. They have a particular um, product out there. We sell it. I'm going to honestly tell you that it's cost productive to use your own regular alcohol and put it in there than to go ahead and use the varnish, the, the diluting varnish. It says I hate the way it smells. It smells like acetate and I can't imagine that that's anything anybody wants to smell in their flower. But as far as this confectioner glaze goes, it is completely edible. I'm not sure very many people are going to be eating these sugar flowers. First of all, they're too beautiful. Second of all, there's a wire in there. They're harder than royal icing once it dries. But they are edible. Somebody wants to eat them. At that point, just put it in a floral styrofoam or styrene foam and let it dry. Thank you so much for joining me in making these orchids. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Go ahead and play the video as many times as you want. If you have any questions, please let me know. I did not show you how to color the buds, but all I did was use that African violet with just a tinge of the plum and made sure to give it a little bit extra oomph than I did the orchid itself because buds are darker. Thank you and I'll see you on the next video.